Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Profit, your event and productivity therapist, coming to you from the heart of Music City in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the event industry, what we have learned from them, and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Hi everyone, this is Angela Prophet, and I'd like to welcome you to Weddings Unveiled. Today, I'm so excited to bring a guest on our show, Amanda Jackson. She is the lead coordinator and director for the Pick In Weddings and Events. And Amanda, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. Of course. Amanda, tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you get into the industry? Okay. Well, I am a Nashville native. I've lived here for 28 years. I live in That's not normal. I know. It's not anymore at all. Of course, <laughs> like, like most people, I moved away to go to college, but I ended up moving back. And my husband and I live in Hendersonville. Um, so I've been here for a long time and I've seen the growth, which is really cool. But um, like most people in our industry, I did not start out in the event industry or in the wedding industry. I did not go to school for it. I was not even thinking about it when I was in college. Um, I went to school for interior design and that's what I did for like three years after college. Um, Now I will say when I was in college and growing up and even after college, I was a natural born like planner, organizer, had a couple leadership roles and organizations and my friends then and now will tell you I was always like the mom of the group. Uh huh. Like there's always We're the same. Yeah, there's always that <laughs> one. Like okay, let's plan a spring break trip. Okay, I was the one with the itineraries and mm-hmm. all that, and it was like to another degree. Like now, still to this day, they're like, okay, we want to plan a trip. You're in charge. Yep. I'm just like, okay, I'd rather have it that way because I have control issues. Exactly. But I'm aware of it <laughs> in a I'm, good way. Yeah, I'm aware of it. Um. <laughs> so my background was in interior design and. You know, like I said, did not have the event industry on my radar at all. Um, How I got into the industry is pretty unique. And I haven't heard anybody else that has had this same story. Now, most people, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I did my own wedding. And then I wanted to be a planner, wanted to be a florist or whatever. Um, That was not me. However, I did do my own wedding. Okay. But... Afterwards, I wasn't like, this is what I want to do. I was just like, okay, that was fun. Like, next. And the only reason I did my own wedding is because I thought it could be done, which I was sadly mistaken. Like, um, now I love helping people who think they can do their own wedding. And you have to be like, well, you know. It's a lot of work. Yeah. You don't realize it, but it's a lot of work. Um, So it was actually my dad. My dad's idea. Okay. My dad's been an entrepreneur since before I was born. He's been in real estate and had a bunch of different businesses. And he's a business person, but he also uses that creative side of his brain too, which is something I'm so glad I inherited through his genes. And my mom's into like art and music, so she's super creative too. But my dad, unbeknownst to me, when I was on my honeymoon, had to go back to the venue to pick up something that we left Uh after the wedding got to talking to the owner, realized that they wanted to sell it, and started talking to them about buying it. Wow. I know. So he's in real estate. So what happened was the lady, he opened the back of his truck. He had a bunch of real estate signs in there. And she's like, oh, we might be looking to sell the property. Would you maybe be interested in being our realtor? That's awesome. And so he was like, okay, yes. Do you want to sell the property? Do you want to sell the business? Do you want to sell both? And they were an older couple and Mm -hmm. they were like, you know what? We are tapped out. We're done. We don't want to do the business anymore. We don't want to do 30 weddings a year. Like we don't care if you just sell the property and somebody lives here or like whatever. They're like, I'm done. Yeah. They were, (laughs) they were checked out and, um, you could tell. 
And so the gears started turning in his head and he told me that he said, I know about three or four people off the top of my head that would want to buy this place. And one of them is me. And so that excited her. Sure. She was, you know, we became friends with her. We, you know, we had our wedding there. And so when we got back from our honeymoon, it was like a week later. So, you know, you're, I'm still in like newlywed mode. Like, oh, my wedding was the best. This is amazing. And um, he sat me down, my husband and my brother. I have a younger brother who's a DJ. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of fit together. In the, in the family. Yeah. And he was like, okay, guys, I know I've, I've, we've had these family meetings all your life. I'm thinking about a new business. And we're all like, okay, what's it going to be? <laughs> and he goes, this is mainly for Amanda. And then I was like, what? Because <laughs> at this point, I was like two and a half years in of my entry level job. Yeah. I wasn't really super happy, but I was using my degree, which yeah. nowadays most people don't tend to do. So right. I thought I was doing it right. And he said, you know, what would you say if I told you that I was interested in buying the pick in? And I was like, wait, you mean the pick in that I got married at like three weeks ago? And he's like, yeah. What would you say if I asked you to quit your job? And run the wedding venue. Wow. And my eyeballs were probably the size of, you know, several yeah. dollars. But he was just like, I'll do the business stuff. Like, I'll get the business license and the taxes and all that. And you can work with the brides. And I was just like, okay. And, you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, hell yeah. Like, yeah. This is so exciting. But on the other half, I was just like, wait a second. That would mean leaving my job. It's a huge risk. Like, what about all this? What what about what I went to school for? Like, how is that going to translate? Am I going to be good at it? Yeah. And then I thought, you know what? I'm an idiot if we don't do this. Yeah. Like, this is going to be the biggest regret ever. So yeah. I was like, okay, let's do it. Mm-hmm. So that was fall, late fall of 2014. It took a whole year to buy the property. Yeah. Because the people that owned it before were really emotionally attached to it. For good reason. Their sure. son lived there. Then they used it as a bed and breakfast. Then they used it for weddings. And we wanted to be really respectful to them in the whole process because it wasn't ever for sale. They just sold it to us. Yeah. Um, so w- that's one of the reasons why we kept the name of the pick in is to like that's be sweet. respectful to them. But um, but yeah, so we took it over in fall of 2015. Okay. 2016, we did about 20 weddings. Okay. That was like our learner year. Uh huh. And then last year we did 40. Wow. This year we'll do about the same. So it's like we had to learn really quick. Yeah. Like what not to do, what to do. And it's been a crazy journey. And I mean, we're always, every event you do, and I'm sure you're the same way. You yep. learn something each time you're like, hmm, totally. maybe I shouldn't do that again. Or maybe I should change my contract to say this. Um, I think we've changed our contract, oh, maybe like 50 times. Yeah. I mean, it just keeps growing and growing. And it's more to protect yourself as well as the client yes. so that no one's really taken advantage of, I guess. Right. And there's no like gray. Yeah. You have to be clear like on everything yep. that you could possibly imagine because people will take something and run with it. Oh, totally. What's that saying? Like you give a mouse a, a cookie yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they like want milk with it or something. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. What would you say is like super special or unique like to the pick in. Well, other than our story. Which, yeah, which is great. Which I put that on the front page of our website. Like a picture of me and my dad on on my wedding day saying like, we loved it so much we bought it. And sometimes people don't care, but sometimes people are like, oh, we saw that on your website. It's so cute. Um, so that's really unique. Um, and the fact that I, that I only got married four years ago. So I still have that bride mentality of like what people want yep um and i can help them give them decor ideas so that's pretty unique um another thing that people love is other than the fact that it's a family business Mm -hmm. um our clients really love that our focus is on customer service and like client experience so like for me and for our i've told our entire team this we have a team about of about 12 people that work for us okay i tell people like You have to treat this day as if it is the biggest day because, yes, we do this 30, 40 times a year, Mm -hmm. but these people do it one time. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They do it one time, and it's the biggest day of their life, and they've paid a lot of money to be here. 
Yep. So you make sure you're in a good mood. If you're in a bad mood, put on a poker face. Yep. That's one thing I've learned about the wedding industry is you have to have a poker face all day, no matter <laughs> what's going on. My poor husband, he hears it all at the end of the night when I go home. But for that day, whether you're the owner or the bartender or you're the guy parking cars, yeah, you have to have a smile on your face. Yep. And you have to be friendly and um our our team does a really good job of that making sure that everybody feels special gotcha and giving everybody that good kind of client experience where they think that we are there they're our only wedding of the yeah. year because we devote so much time to them yeah do y'all use a psychology methodology to hire for wedding days no not I, yet I, not yet i mean i'm sure we will later yeah. down the road but right now we've you know um, we've, we're from the area, yeah. so we know a lot of people Sure, and a lot of our setup crew is just like high school guys or like gotcha. early college guys that do like the manual labor. Yeah. Um, and then I have a couple girls that I work with that I'll take on as like day of assistance and stuff. Yeah. There's, um, well, and if you've listened to my podcast before, I'm super passionate about true colors yeah. and teaching it. And, um, like I went to their university <laughs> I'm a nerd. Um, (laughs) But what I have found, like with True Colors, is exactly what you're saying. And so blue people, like they care. They have the passion. Yes. And what brings them happiness is if other people are happy. And so hiring blue people, like for the wedding day, Mm -hmm. to make sure that that everyone is happy. Like that's so important. Yes. To make sure that you have like the right people with the right attitude Uh because it can kind of make or break your venue. Oh, it can. Yeah. And one of the things that was a challenge for us when I took it over um, was there was mixed reviews when we bought it that, you know, I would say 80% of the reviews were great, Mm -hmm. but there was a couple that were really bad. Was it people based? Do you think? It was. I talked to the owner about it, the the previous owner, because I was like, very open and honest with her. And she was like, you know, we do have some really bad reviews online, but I'll tell you what happened because I don't want you to do the same thing that I did. She said, when we got really busy one year, there was a a span of two years where I couldn't keep up with it. Yeah. So I hired two assistants Mm -hmm. to do the day of stuff. Yeah. And they were a very hands-off venue. Like it was super cheap first of all but you had to set up your own chairs oh, you God. had to do everything which we do everything for them now because awesome. we want them to relax and have a mimosa while they watch us do all the work but she said she hired two people to do like the day of mm-hmm. and they kind of got as we say in the south a little too big for their britches <laughs> and i love it they got a little too big for their britches and started treating people like they were you know i don't know how to put it politically correct, but they were a little rude. Yeah. And so those people who she hired got bad reviews for her. Yeah. So that's one thing like of the people that I choose to to work with me on wedding days, Mm -hmm. they have to be aware of like, no, the customer's not always right, but you have to make them feel like they're a hundred percent. And like (laughs) one of the girls that helps me is my sister-in-law and she's a nurse. So I know she's a caring type person and I can also be bossy to her and she doesn't mind. Yeah. (laughs) I can tell her what to do and we can, you know, we can vibe off of one another. But that's one thing that's been a big challenge is keeping that in the back of my mind. Like anybody that you hire or any vendor that Mm -hmm. works on my behalf, because like sometimes we'll provide the catering or we'll provide the flowers. Yep. That vendor is then a representation of your company and you have to be really careful who you work with because can turn sap like sour bad yeah like I've had um like you were saying your vendors kind of represent you and so I've I even think back to last year where I was in the 15 years you would think in 50 16 years (laughs) you kind of know what to do and what not to do right and um we had a destination wedding And I took the wedding because it was one of my dear friends in the industry, Mm -hmm. um, one of his buddies' weddings. And um, the location had changed a few times. It went from, like, one place to another place, from, like, Brother's Farm to Mama's Farm, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, our job is to educate people and say, um, you know, how do you want to spend your money? And if you want to spend X amount of dollars on building a tent and air or heat with sides, um, restrooms, 
it all is, are you on septic tank? Like yeah. all these things. People don't think about it. They don't. And, you know, I should have asked more questions, but because it was my friend's friend, you know, that kind yeah. of thing, I, I, I didn't follow my process and, um, we did not have a good experience. Like, for example, you know, they wanted to do it in their hometown. That's fine. But their friends wanted to do the decorating and the cake and this and that. And again, like I get it, that's fine. But when you don't use our design team, you're not going to experience or get the same outcome because the vendors that I've worked with over the years, like in a funny way, I'm like, we're all potty trained. Yeah. We're all in the same way. Like a well-oiled machine. Completely. If you take one of those pieces out, it's not going to be the same as other right. clients. And so it was just a nightmare, like an absolute nightmare. Yeah. And people ask, they're like, well, I interviewed this planner and this planner, and you have to use their people. And I'm like, guys, you don't get it. Like, you're not going to get the same outcome. And so, like you said, you have to kind of learn fast. And it's yeah. like, oh, geez, I'll never do that again. Mm-hmm. When really, like, I was just trying to help. Yeah. Um, and then like getting the reviews and getting the rude voicemails and text messages and emails. And it's like, I have nothing to say to you other than shame on me for taking your event, shame on you for not following the process, but really it's my fault Yeah, because I should have said you have to follow my process regardless because we can't have a successful outcome. Yeah. So I totally get it. But you've learned from that. Yeah. (laughs) And I don't do it anymore. Yeah. I was going to say, you probably won't ever do it again, but... No, because as the planner or the venue, it's like, it's the same thing with caterers and having a list. I don't know if you guys experienced this. We do. As of last year. Yeah. And, but why? Because, and also, I'm not going to name names, but (laughs) there was a very small kind of restaurant place that the bride wanted to use. It was barbecue. We're kind of more of a rustic venue. Sure. Yeah. So a lot of people do barbecue. Mm -hmm. I get it. Um, and the mother of the bride, I let her know, like, listen, it's in our contract. Our staff is not responsible for serving your guests. Mm -hmm. You know, all the caterers that we use, their staff, they bring all their own equipment. They decorate the buffet to fit whatever the theme is. They stay through the whole reception. They bust the tables, which not every caterer does. I've learned. Yep. You have Uh, to specify. Yes. Don't assume. They have to stay and serve all the guests. And this particular, I'll say caterer in quotes, because I don't think they had ever catered a wedding before. Uh-huh. I didn't learn that till it was too late. Um, they had only ever done drop-offs. And I was like, okay, well, the mother of the bride was like, well, I, don't worry about it. I'm going to pay extra to have them stay because it was a 250-person wedding. It's a lot of people. And you can't ask your aunt or uncle or your friends to do a buffet for that many people. And it makes the venue look bad because they go behind your back and complain. Yeah, I'm getting there. Don't (laughs) worry. So they show up and they had their own day of coordinator. So I was not coordinating that day. And it was a coordinator that I know and love and she's amazing. And she comes up to me. She's like, Amanda, the caterer just showed up and there was some kind of miscommunication. The mom's saying she paid for them to stay and they're saying it's a drop off. Can you please come talk to them and tell them they need to stay? And I was like, first of all, what? (laughs) I was like, how's this falling on me? But it's all right. I'm the head honcho. I'll take care of it. So I walk up and I basically had to tell them like, you're not leaving. Yeah. You have to stay and serve these guests. Yeah. And I didn't want to get the mother of the bride involved because she was taking pictures and all that. I was like, I know for a fact that the mother paid extra for you guys to stay. Okay. Here's the catch. They were in dirty, filthy basketball shorts, like athletic shorts. Of course. (laughs) And tennis shoes and like greasy white t-shirts that looked like they had just pulled apart all the pulled pork and (laughs) just didn't change their shirt. And like nasty baseball caps. And my dad was working that event with me too because he worked some weddings. And he looked at me. He was like, who the hell are these people? (laughs) And why are they, start, what, what's going on? Yeah. Because they look like they had just come from like a, an auto shop. Oh like God. they were so dirty. And, um, you know, the buffet's going. They don't really know what they're doing because, as I said, I don't think they had ever catered a wedding before. Yeah. And, you know, the food's getting low and people are coming up to me 
coming up to, we supply all the bartenders for our events. Just that's one thing that we like to control. So the they were, safe way. Yeah. Yep. We were going up to the bartender saying, you're out of mac and cheese. You're out of this. You're out of that. And I looked at dad and I'm like, this doesn't look good on us. Mm -mm. Because when people go to the wedding, they don't know that the pick-in didn't bring the food. That's right. And so people, I looked at the um, one of the catering guys, which there was only two of them. <laughs> for 200 <laughs> Oh yes. my God. Yes. And this is the biggest one that I was just like, never, never again. I looked at him. I said, you know, your food lo is looking like it's running a little low out there. Um, you know, did, did you guys bring enough? They're, they're full numbers, 250. Angela. <laughs> he looked at me and he goes, well, I don't know. We just brought as much food as we serve in the restaurant in one day. Oh my gosh. And I was just like, in never. the back of my mind, I'm like, we're changing our contract to say this. Yep. We're having a preferred caterer list. Yep. And now what we do is we have a preferred list. And if they want to use somebody that's not on that list, or if they have met somebody like at a bridal show or somewhere that they love and they're not on our list, they have to meet a certain set of requirements. Absolutely. Which is pretty basic. Like yep. they have to wear a uniform or wear all black. Like you wouldn't think that's a big deal unless you've experienced what we experienced. Oh yeah. So I'm like, when people say, oh, well, you know, what are your requirements for caterers? Or they look at me like I'm crazy when I say that. I'm like, it's for your best interest. Absolutely. Because of that, that story of like, yeah, that it was complete disaster. So if any brides are listening to this, understand that it is totally in your best interest that it's. Now, I will say that there are some venues slash resorts I work at, and they have a list of not only caterers, but vendors. And I think it catches people off guard when a planner asks them, so are these people on your list because they're paying you to be on the list and they get a 20% cut or a 30% cut? And is that your business model on mm -hmm. making revenue or is it because it makes your venue shine and everyone has the same goal? Yeah. And I don't, I don't care. I just think that that should be disclosed to the client yeah. so the client understands. I never thought about that before. Yeah. I guess I didn't know people did that. Yeah. It's a whole nother revenue. Well, gosh, early on, I didn't know either. Yeah. And then I started reading the fine print. I'm like, wait a minute. Why are they getting 30%? They're not doing anything. Like when you have an outside planner coming in. Yeah. Um, and then some venues, like they have a day of, which again, my family had a venue for 35 years. My oh, uncle really? did everything in house. And uh, I mean, all the way down from making the dress to the cake, to the flower, everything, Whoa. one stop shop. And I mean, it was an, an amazing machine, but to me, it was boring because I'm like, <laughs> I like to do different things. Right. You have to branch out every now and again. Yeah. I mean, but anyway, it's interesting as I've been doing like more consulting, looking at the different models out there. Mm -hmm. And again, like it is very profitable for a venue to have everything in house, lights, drapes. But again, making sure the client understands the value right. if you have tables and chairs and all of this stuff, like, do you really have that stuff? Or are you just telling them you have that and then you're outsourcing it and marking it up 30% to drive more revenue? Yeah. Again, cool with it, but just, like, disclose that to people. Right. Um, yeah, so that's a whole other conversation. Oh, yeah. And that's one thing, like, with <laughs> our venue, that's not something that, like, we're in Gallatin. Yeah. So we're, like, 45 minutes north of Nashville. Yeah. In a smaller location. So, like, value is a big thing up there. And yeah. because we are more of, like, a rustic feel we're not a mansion yeah we're not this huge plantation but we're also not a barn right so we're somewhere in the middle so that's something that we have to you know kind of delicately work with what we're putting in our packages but we also let people customize their packages which is which is awesome people love it yeah because i'm like hey here's this this is our most popular package it comes with a coordinator, the food, the flowers, the cake, and the DJ. That's awesome. Like the basics. Yeah. But if you've already got your DJ, mm -hmm. you can take that out and we'll yeah. reduce the price or whatever. If you want to add on an ice cream truck or whatever, um, that's something that we've kind of implemented that has been really well received because they can kind of mix and match and do what they want. Yeah. But you're right. Sometimes when people go and they think all inclusive, they think money signs. Yep. And they're like, "No, I want to stay away from that." So we've we've kind of had to walk a thin line of 
what to offer and what not to offer because we don't want to exclude those people that think that all inclusives are too much or too right. money hungry. I guess it's really um, difficult sometimes to for venues to like figure out. And that's another reason I love True Colors is because it helps you identify like what kind of clients you want to work with Mm -hmm. and more importantly, the clients that you don't want at your venue because no matter what you do, it's um, not going to make them happy and Mm -hmm. they're just complainful, insatiable people. I didn't even know what that word meant. (laughs) And then someone's like, that woman is insatiable. And I'm like, huh? And I'm like Googling it. I'm like, how do you even spell that? But it's like a clear definition of just people who are negative um, and then working in a psychology mental ward. Like, life is hard. I mean, life's not easy, but it's all in how you perceive gratefulness. And, like, no matter how hard things can be sometimes, I sometimes can just sense the negativity Like, for example, recently there was a groom and he was the an only child and his father was um, unexpectedly killed in a motorcycle wreck. And so the mom, his mother, was just very negative about the wedding, Mm -hmm. very rude to me. And I told my, I never take it personal, but I'm like, it's hard sometimes. It is, but I'm like, something else has got to be going on. Yeah, like it's not me. (laughs) No. And so, you know, then I got it out. Well, not that I was like prying, but then it came out where, you know, I would try to be a good listener and I just try to stay positive. And then she eventually told me that she was angry with God because. Her husband's not here to see their only child get married. You know, and it's sad. And then you become a therapist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, or you become, like, something that I run into a lot when I coordinate for people is divorced families. Yep. Because with our... Every, every day. Yeah. Yep. With our venue, the ceremony and the reception and the getting ready area is all in one space. So we have, like, this big hilltop space. There's a big cabin where the bridal party gets ready, and that's kind of where we store the family like before they go down the aisle um and it's happened a few times where like getting the mom and the dad in the same room Uh you can like feel the tension yeah even with my own brother's wedding my brother got married last year and our parents have been divorced since 98 okay and they haven't seen each other in about five years wow they they don't get along um but getting them just in the same room yeah for at our own venue, at my <laughs> own brother's wedding, I was like, this sucks. Like, it doesn't even get easier when it's your, your own. own wedding. In fact, it's worse. <laughs> yeah, it's worse. But um, but no, I mean, it's, it's something that, I guess, little things that you never think about until it happens. Yeah. You're like, maybe I should handle it differently next time. Or, you know, it's always a constant learning experience. And that's the thing about weddings that was similar to my my old experience in interior design is every, in my case, client, but in my old case, house yeah. or client, every kitchen is different. Yeah. Every wedding is different. It's not the same stuff every day, which is great, but it's also can be stressful at the same time. Yeah. Every client that you book has a different family dynamic, has different budgets, different what's important to them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, Definitely makes for an interesting career. Yeah. That's why when we have, we have our intern program. Do y'all do that? We don't. Okay. We're not there quite yet. Gotcha. We might, um, our plans, we want to expand in the next five years. Awesome. So we might get there. As of right now, I'm just like, um, dad, if you can figure out a way to clone me. Yeah. That would be great. But maybe I can help you with that. Yeah. (laughs) Because, like, with our intern program, again, like, I know I keep going back to True Colors, um, but there's also Strength Finders and a few other um, psychological tests that are out there. Uh, But I like to do True Colors with all of my clients, like, once we get going. Mm -hmm. Because usually in a first marriage, opposites attract. And then I have also found, and myself personally, like, in true colors, I have to do it with you so you understand the colors. Okay. I'm seeing if I have a book I've in my done office. That. I did it at a leadership conference. Oh yeah, but it was in 2011, so I don't even remember what color. I, I bet am. you you've changed. Though. I probably have. Well, I can tell you what color you are. I know you're gold. Okay. Um, your is your first color because you own when you're like you know I like some people's you know you can be the boss and people respect that and you like to get it done and like you've got your planner here yeah, and just so notes. that's a very gold 
feature, mm-hmm. um, which in healthcare, I had to be gold. Oh, I bet. And I was good at it, but that's not really me. Right. And um, so I'm very orange. Your dad's very orange because it's a very entrepreneurial. Renewal. You have to be doing different projects, wearing a lot of different hats. Yep, yeah. and 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 that's okay. Yeah, where some people it stresses them out. Anyway, I love doing it with my couples and their families when I have the opportunity, mm-hmm. because when it gets really tense, I'm like, remember he's green, or remember she's gold. So what I have found in this industry is if you customize the message based on the way they need to hear it. And it really is an art of, it's just psychology. Yeah. But once you start to do it, it almost comes natural. Yeah. And now some people they're like, that's manipulating. And I'm like, no, it's customer service. Right. And that's exactly what you said. It's finding out how you can give them the best client experience. A hundred percent. And it's funny. I'll just, this is just a random funny story. I was listening to a podcast. Yeah. I think it was last week. Um, and there was a lady on there. I don't know if her background was in psychology or not, but she has this system. And if you haven't listened to it, I'll have to send it to yeah. you because it's really funny. It's really okay. enlightening. And she had seven different, it was called the psychology of a bride. Okay. And she had seven, seven different categories Okay. and was describing all these different categories of what a bride can be and how you can best interact with them. That's awesome. And it was anything from... The mouse was one of them. Okay. Like somebody who's really quiet and reserved and hates to make decisions, mm-hmm. which I've had a ton of those. Yeah. Or sometimes, you know, the groom steps in and wants to do stuff or the mother kind of overtakes things. Yep. To put it politely. Um, there's the the daddy's girl. Yeah. Who like gets everything they want, throws a fit, <laughs> um, which I haven't had too many of those, thankfully, knock on wood. But it was seven different categories, and as I was listening to it, I was like thinking in my head of what category do my 2018 brides fall into, yeah. and how can I best address them? Yeah. Like one of the things I do to help with client experience for brides that I coordinate for is I send them a consultation form, uh-huh. um, like about six months out from their wedding, that says like, "Tell me about how you met. Tell me about the proposal." Um, how many your bridesmaids are you going to have? How many of this? Um, what are you most excited about for your wedding? Uh, list the three words that are most important to you when it comes to your wedding. Mm-hmm. And then at the bottom, I always put, are there any concerns that you may have that you think your coordinator needs to know about? That's awesome. And I got one the other day and all it said was, um, I apologize now for my mom. Oh no. <laughs> I was just like, I'm so glad she put that Yeah. because now I know ahead of time, this mom might be an issue. Let's just kill her with kindness. Let's make sure she's having a good day. She has a, a glass of champagne in her hand. Yeah. Because it might be something, like you said, psych- yeah. psychologically that she's, you know, feeling a little resentment on for whatever reason mm-hmm. towards the wedding. So I'm really glad. At first I was like, oh, great. But then I was like, you know what? I'm actually glad she said something <laughs> because that helps me on, you know, for future reference. Yeah. What would you say is like, the number one thing that your clients, like after it's all over, do they all say something consistent? Like, I loved this. Yes. They always say that they loved our staff. Like almost every review that we get, not to toot my own horn, they always mention me by name. That's great. Which is great um, because I'm the only one they're talking to. So I don't really have anybody else's name. Um, But they always mention our staff, like how great they were. And I always, whenever we get a review, we have um, an app that we use called Crew. Okay. It's like a group messaging app uh-huh. that we put our schedule on for cool. our team members. And I always take a screenshot of that review and send it to everybody. Perfect. Just to say like, hey, you're doing great. Look what the April 21st bride said about you guys. Yep. Great work. Yep. Um, Because I want them to know, like, it's not all about me and my dad getting all the praise. Like, we want to make sure that they know they're doing a great job, too. Yep. That's one thing they always say. Our staff was great. So one thing that I've learned, because you mentioned expanding, Mm -hmm. like, over the next five years. Yeah, that's our our five-year plan. Yeah. Um, One thing that I've learned, and again, it's like, you don't know these things until you, like, get into it. Mm -hmm. And so when we added the intern program... And I had some really sharp girls, and I started to train them. And then brides start to say, 
well, can you do June 5th or can you do Labor Day? And it's like, oh, I've been booked for two years for that date, but like, I don't want to say no. Right. And so I, you know, started to train other people. And, but then, but the market, the audience was like, no, I want you to be there on the wedding day. Right. So I had to hire a coach to help me understand and again, psychologically re potty train my audience. And it yeah. took about a year. Um, But again, I love like sharing experiences. Mm -hmm. And so something for me that I took away was in verbally, in my website, in my videos, everything that I did, I always said, team, 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 team. Like I use the word literally seven times. Like I would record my interview meetings where the client's interviewing me, but really I'm kind of interviewing them now right? (laughs) um, to see if it's even a good fit. But making sure that I say that. And he would listen to me and come back and say, Angela, you didn't say it seven times. Like, you've got to say it seven times. Instead of me or I. Yep. And then they associate everything. A hundred percent. And I will say the consistency, it works. Yeah. And so we did it for a year. And then the next year, like I keep this, um, that cube right there with like all these thank you notes. Mm -hmm. Literally, I'm not even... 100% exaggerating every single thank you note we get or email, it literally says Angela and team or Angela, your team. The word team is in every single thank you note, every single one. So it's like, I, and I'm just like you, it's not all about me. No. And even on the wedding day, like I'm a control freak too, but to (laughs) grow, (laughs) uh, yeah, but to grow, you have to learn to let go a little bit. Yeah. And it's hard But as long as you have the right person with the right personality, Mm -hmm. that they're trainable, they can take criticism to become better and better service the client and the venue and everybody's working as a team, that's why rap meetings are so important. Like after events, it's like have a rap meeting or a phone call or something or put everybody on an email and say, do you have feedback, good or bad? Yeah. It, it's We call it opportunity, not bad. Mm-hmm. Um, one vendor, I think the biggest change for me a few years ago, you know, we do floor plans. And my lighting vendor said, like, Angela, you make so many changes. Like, what version are we on? Can you just put, every time you make a change, like put version One, two, I'm like, of course, like that's an easy thing. But like, I didn't think of it because I'm so stuck in my little hole. (laughs) And so I'm always telling vendors, like if there's something I'm doing that is like bugging the shit out of you, like tell Tell me. me, And sometimes like there's a reason for it and Mm -hmm. they don't understand. And so, but once we communicate and have that open dialogue, um, they're like, oh, I get it. Yeah. Instead of like being angry or agitated with yeah. each other. Yeah. Um, but I think like you're on the right path to like sharing it with the staff and team. Mm-hmm. The other day I learned that um, the we were at a tasting and there's a lot of servers involved because it's a big, big Indian wedding. And one, I think I said wait staff and the girl said, Angela, they prefer to be called servers. And I'm like, oh, Oh shit, nobody ever told me that. Yeah. So in my 32 page timeline, I like <laughs> did command F and then replace the little function because I'd yeah. put wait staff mm-hmm. and I'm never consistent. It's like whatever comes to my mind, server, team, whatever. And so I literally changed every single thing to server. And it that's a simple fix. Right, but you would have never thought about never. it unless they would have told you. Never. Yeah. So, I mean, I totally get it. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've already talked about this a little bit, but, like, what would you say your number one challenge in the industry? Well, I think my main challenge is just being so new to the industry. It can be good or bad because I'm not stuck in my ways. Yeah. But I'm also still learning. Yeah. Um. I'll tell you a funny story. Like I said, I'm 28. Yeah. And you're young. I have a baby face. Like I still get ID'd everywhere I go. Me too. (laughs) Everywhere I go. Um, My my younger brother, who's 25, can grow a full beard in two days. Doesn't he looks 30? Wow. um, So one of my vendors that I work with all the time, my caterer, um, 
this past year we were at a bridal show together and she's like, I just want to let you know you're doing such a good job. When you took over that venue, I thought to myself, oh Lord, here we go. This young girl that's going to take over this venue and probably run it into the ground, but you're doing a great job. And I was like, wait a second. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Thank you so much. But I was like, is that what people think of me? You have to prove yourself. Exactly. So that's my main challenge is like, Meeting people, when people come to the venue, I always try to, like, dress appropriately Mm -hmm. and unless it's, like, raining or cold and I just wrap up and throw a baseball hat on. But, Mm -hmm. like, it's sometimes it's winning over the parents. Yep. Because if they've got – or if it's, like, like a couple that's maybe in their mid-30s and I'm younger than they are, Mm -hmm. they might think in the back of their head, what does she know? Mm -hmm. But you have to – you're right. You have to prove yourself every single day in the way that you talk to them, in the way that your emails come across Mm -hmm. um, to where they know, like, I know my shit. (laughs) Yeah. But that's – I guess our my biggest challenge is just being new to the industry and just learning. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we did when we bought the pick-in to kind of, I guess, one-up what we were already doing because we were so new – and this was my dad's idea, so I'll give him credit for it. Yeah. But we made appointments with all the other venues in our area. That's awesome. That were similar to us. Okay. And some people were like, yeah, come on over. And some people never heard back from them, which mm-hmm. is fine. I get it. But I'm the type of person that is in the mindset of there's so many brides and there's, what, 100 people moving to Nashville a day? A day. There's plenty of brides out there. Plenty. There's no reason to be over competitive yeah it's annoying but what we did is we went to all these other venues that were similar to us that were outdoors some that were bigger than us some that were smaller than us Mm -hmm. and we wanted to say hey let's be friends yeah because if i'm booked for october 1st yep but i know that you're similar i'll say hey go see babs out at iris woods in mount julia i just saw them really i helped them in the very beginning yeah i'm from mount julia oh really they're so sweet so they're very similar to our venue in size and in kind of like vibes yeah or if like our cap is 250 okay so if they want something bigger than that i can say hey here's one that's 10 miles away from us kind of similar but they can hold up to 400 people yeah and in return we'd love for people to do the same for us sure which um i think really helped us yeah they also gave us like unsolicited advice like hey while you're here let me tell you all the reasons why you need to make your clients have insurance or let me tell you why you should put a limit on how many kegs you let people have yeah or here's why you need to do this or here's what i've found has done that and that was such an eye-opening experience that i have a lot of respect for them Mm -hmm. for not being like Oh, your competition, I'm not, I don't want to meet with you. Or, yeah, you can come see my venue, but I'm not going to be nice and I'm just going to show you around and then say goodbye. Like, each person that we met with, like, took the time to sit down with us and be like, let's be friends. Yeah. And I think that's so important in this industry because it's such a unique experience and it's very stressful. And Mm -hmm. you need to have those people to, like, bounce ideas off of or lean on sometimes like yeah I remember the same caterer one of um the owner was talking to me one time and she was like Amanda I got my first review that wasn't five stars like how do I how do I respond to it like can you help me draft a response or like what should I do and I was like wow I'm so glad you're asking me like it made me feel better that I now have friends in the industry that we can like bounce ideas off of one another and I know there's tons of Facebook groups for wedding professionals and things like that. But it's so much different when you can meet with someone on a regular basis and like have that rapport with them and have that connection. Absolutely. Yeah. I find in the South, people are a lot more receptive to being open to sharing and um, just being freaking nice, like giving back. Mm -hmm. Um, But then as I travel and go I won't even say, like, other places that are not in the South. Um, People are very much alone, Mm -hmm. like, living as if they're stranded on an island alone. And I very much can tell the difference between people in the South where there is a community. Yeah. And now there's a few people that they might have a hidden agenda, but your true colors end up showing eventually. Mm -hmm. Um. But I completely agree with you. Like, there's so much business to go around. Yes. 
And it's like, why would you not help? Like there's planners, they think I'm crazy. They're like, why would you help other planners and designers? Like, why would you teach them to do what you do? And I'm like, well, maybe we just don't have the same goals. Like my goal is to be the biggest educational thought leader in this industry. That if somebody has an issue or a problem or a challenge or whatever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. they come to me and based on psychology, we work through it and figure out the best result to make sure that you're understood. Right. Um, And so, but not every planner wants that. They just want to plan 10 weddings a year and move on. Right. Um, So it's like, you can't judge people, you know, it's like you might have different goals. So I totally agree. Well, can you tell our listeners where they can find you online? Yes. So... We are The Pick-In on okay. Facebook and Instagram. Awesome. And our website is pickinevents.com. It's awesome. It's pretty easy to find. And something you were telling me earlier is some people will think that it's a bed and breakfast. Yes. And because of the name. Which, yeah. Like I mentioned, we kept the name out of respect for the old which owner. Which is awesome. And it's kind of, a lo- and we've got it on our website, um, but a lot of people are asked like, what the heck does that mean? Yeah. But the person who owned it before, her husband is um, a bluegrass musician. Cool. He's actually one of the oldest living members of the Opry. Oh, wow. He's like 87 or 88, and yeah. he just played the Opry last week. His name's Jesse McReynolds. That's amazing. And he was in a famous bluegrass duo in like the 50s and 60s. Okay. And so he's called a picker. Okay. Because he plays the mandolin and the fiddle. And so they built this... Um, you know, big pavilion for bluegrass music. And then the cabin that's on the site, they called it the pick in because pickers could come and, you know, it was more like a singer songwriter retreat. Yeah. People could stay in the cabin and they did kind of use it as a bed and breakfast. And before we bought it, they used to let brides stay the night, which we don't do anymore. Yeah. Um, so we kept the name, but because of that, sometimes it throws in some confusion. Like, yeah. People will just drive out there and be like, or I got a call two weeks. <laughs> I got a call two weeks ago that was like, yeah, I need a room for April sixth through the eighth. And I'm just like, first of all, how did you find my number? Because if it's on the website, you can clearly see that we're an event venue. But I didn't say that. Right. I was just like, well, we actually are a wedding venue. We don't yeah. have any rooms for rent. Um, there's a Hampton Inn 15 minutes away. Like I didn't know what to say. Right. Um, but yes, the pick in is um, an event. And wedding venue. Yeah. Nobody can stay there overnight. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to be an innkeeper. Like, that's not my thing. It's a whole nother business model. Oh, yes. Definitely. A whole nother business But that's model. kind of the backstory of why we kept the name and what the name actually means. Gotcha. So, um, to wrap things up, I know that you said that you guys probably have 30, 40 weddings coming up this year. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a like a busier time versus like a downtime. Fall is always our busiest time. Gotcha. Okay. Because we're mainly outdoors. Sure. We we just updated the venue last year. Um, the pavilion we've added central heat, so we can do winter awesome. weddings now, which is great. Because our old season used to go from April to you know the beginning of November when yeah. it starts to get really cold. Um, so that's kind of what we're planning this year, maybe to do more Christmas parties and stuff like that. But okay, October is like. Crazy, crazy. So don't reach out to you for October. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But if you're planning a holiday party or anything like that. um, So do you guys, so people that get married there, do you guys follow up with them and like to say, hey, if you have a company party or something like that, think of us? Yeah, I try to. I definitely try to. The thing that I like to do is I'll follow them on social media. That's great. Especially the girls that I coordinate for because I mm-hmm. want to see their wedding photos. Sure. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'll reach out to them and ask for a review. Yeah. Um, which I don't do every single time, but depends on the way. Selectively. Yeah. There's definitely <laughs> been one or two over the past three years that I'm like, I don't want to ever see you again. <laughs> yep. But um, yep. But I'll always reach out for a review and we'll always you know, send them like a thank you card and stuff like that just to you know, keep that image. And a lot of my followers on Instagram are past brides. That's awesome. Because they want to keep up with us and see what we're doing and see how we're growing. So. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you for coming out today You're and welcome. sharing everything. And if you are a bride getting married or if you're a planner or do you guys 
allow other planners yeah. in, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Um, check them out. Their website is beautiful. You have great galleries on the website. Yeah. I've been poking around, and <laughs> I love your cute little logo. It's, Thanks. like, very perfect for what you guys do. Thank you. So thank you so much for your time. And thanks so much for listening to Weddings Unveiled. Be sure to share with your friends and comment below and have a great day. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with other wedding and event professionals. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for more tips on how to grow your business. And if you have a question or an unresolved issue that you want guidance on, connect with us on AngelaProfit.com. For more valuable resources, again, visit the website. And until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.